My name is Zainab Erolu. I'm a medical oncologist in the Department of Cutaneous Oncology at Moffitt Cancer Center in Tampa, Florida. So just to go over briefly some of the highlights from this year's ASCO meeting, um, let's say that we had three main categories uh, that were covered, uh, adjuvant and new adjuvant, uh, melanoma, metastatic uh, disease, and some updates in some of the rare uh, melanoma tumor types. Um, with regards to uh, adjuvant treatment, um, with the Keynote 716 study that compared patients uh, with stage 2B2C melanoma to either uh, adjuvant pembrolizumab for up to one year or placebo. Uh, there was updates on relapse-free survival and distant metastasis-free survival. Um, and this was a significant difference in RFS uh, between uh, pembrolizumab versus placebo, uh, about uh, over 80% uh, uh, relapse-free at uh, two years in patients receiving pembro, uh, about 74% or so in patients uh, who received uh, placebo. And as we know, the study did lead to the uh, FDA approval of uh, pembrolizumab in stage two disease. Um, although there is a 17% rate of grade three or four toxicities uh, with uh, pembrolizumab uh, in these patients, so um, I would highlight the importance of you know having a, a detailed discussion with a patient uh, before starting adjuvant immunotherapy in the stage two B two C disease setting, uh, given that the absolute uh, risk reduction is about eight percent. Um, and some of the side effects from these immunotherapy drugs, as we know, can be uh, long-lasting. Uh, there were also uh, updates on several new adjuvant uh, clinical trials, which has been a very active area of research, uh, including the PRADO study uh, that was presented by Dr. Blank. Um, this was uh, based on a prior study you may be familiar with called Opus and Neo, uh, which looked at two cycles of uh, new adjuvant uh, Ipinevo, uh, followed by surgery and no adjuvant therapy in patients with stage 3 melanoma and lymph node involvement, and uh, saw almost half the patients with pathologic complete response um, and uh, great relapse free survival rates uh, post surgery. So, the Prado study uh, is an attempt to see if the surgery portion uh, can be de escalated, uh, particularly in patients who have uh, complete or near complete uh, pathologic response um, to the neoadjuvant therapy. So the investigators uh, used uh, and placed a marker into an, what they called an index lymph node. Uh, so that's the lymph node they knew had uh, melanoma prior to uh, the start of new adjuvant therapy. And after the two cycles of ipinevo, only that index lymph node was surgically removed. And if in that lymph node, the patients, uh, there was a complete path response or near complete path response, patients did not have the therapeutic lymph node dissection or any adjuvant therapy. If they had a partial path response, they had the larger surgery, um, no adjuvant therapy and no response surgery followed by adjuvant therapy. And what the investigators found was uh, about 60% or so of patients had a path complete response or near complete response, so less than 10% viable melanoma. Um, and these patients, um, you know, who again did not receive a therapeutic lymph node dissection, so they were spared, you know, some of the side effects, lipedema, et cetera, from that surgery. Um, at two years, 93% of them were uh, relapse free. Um, whereas, uh, not surprisingly, the patients who had a partial path response or no response, uh, you know, had worse outcomes. So, for example, with a partial response, uh, about two, uh, one third of patients had already relapsed at two years. So, um, you know, there'll be more follow-up from these studies and, it, you know, looking at uh, randomized uh, approaches as well, comparing new adjuvant to adjuvant treatments. But it's an exciting area of research and potentially may allow us to uh, de-escalate uh, surgery, uh, particularly in patients uh, who may have a, a complete or near-complete pathologic uh, response uh, following a couple doses of uh, neoadjuvant uh, ipinevo immunotherapy. On that note, uh, there was also an update on uh, desmoplastic uh, melanoma uh, with the new adjuvant pembrolizumab study. Um, this was a study that gave three doses of uh, pembro to patients with uh, resectable desmoplastic melanoma. Uh, if you're not familiar, desmoplastic melanoma is a rare type um, of cutaneous melanoma. 
but tends to be very infiltrative um, and the surgeries for it, which are typically in the head neck uh, phase, can be very disfiguring. So um, this was an attempt to see, you know, can we, can the patients undergo a less morbid surgery uh, or potentially, you know, eventually maybe not even need surgery. Uh, but in the study, uh, 50, all the patients had surgery as planned following the PEMBRO, uh, three cycles, and 55% had a complete pathologic response. And so far, um, you know, the median progression for, uh, relapse free survival has not been reached. So it may actually be possible, um, you know, for patients with desmoplastic melanoma, which, you know, we know in the metastatic setting is very sensitive to immunotherapy, uh, it may be possible to, you know, for these patients with a severe melanoma type, that they may not uh, need, you know, a very large disfiguring surgery or perhaps won't need surgery at all. Turning to the metastatic setting, there was an update on the relativity study, which looked at uh, nivo, nivolumab and relatlimab, which is an anti-LAG3 antibody, also known as Obdualag. Um, the study did meet its uh, primary endpoint of improving progression-free survival. Um, Compared to nivolumab alone, uh, progression-free survival is over 10 months. Compared to about five months for uh, nivolumab monotherapy, these are patients treatment naive in the metastatic setting. Uh, and there were some updates with the data. Um, the toxicity with nivorella um, is, was about 20% grade three, four, compared to about 10% with nivo. Definitely lower than what we tend to see with ipinivo, um, but the uh, the tumor response rates was about 40% uh, or so lower than what we see with Ipinivo. So uh, I think we'll need more information um, in upcoming and ongoing studies uh, to really f determine you know, which patients should receive nivolumab or latlamab, which should receive nivolumab with ipilimumab or anti-PD-1 uh, monotherapy. Um, and hopefully ongoing studies <clears throat> Will, will give us a better idea of, uh, of uh, how to utilize the available uh, treatment options uh, in the metastatic setting. Um, there was also uh, uh, an update on a study um, in, in a hard to treat group of patients, uh, melanoma with brain metastasis, uh, that looked at a triplet regimen of BRAF MEK inhibitor therapy, vemurafenib cobimetinib with atezolizumab, anti pdl one and found a median uh, intracranial progression-free survival about seven months in patients with symptomatic brain mets, so potentially up to eight milligrams of dexamethasone. And we do know patients with symptomatic brain mets tend to have quite poor outcomes. Intracranial PFS is only about one month with ipinivo, so uh, this was exciting to see that uh, there may potentially be a role for uh, triplet regimens in patients with uh, symptomatic brain mets, and there's ongoing clinical trials, uh, such as the SWOG-S2000 study uh, that's exploring this further, comparing a triplet to uh, ipinivo. And lastly, um, there were some updates in some of the harder to treat cancers, such as a melanoma type, such as uh, uveal melanoma, um, which we know is very challenging to treat in the metastatic setting, very poorly responsive to immunotherapy. Um, uh, but we do know 80% of the time uveal melanomas will metastasize to the liver first. Uh, and there was a session uh, dedicated to liver-directed approaches for uh, metastatic uh, uveal melanomas, and one of them was uh, with percutaneous hepatic perfusion um, using the Delcath delivery device, delivering high-dose melphaline chemotherapy, and the trial randomizing patients uh, to PHP versus best alternative care, either immuno or chemotherapy. The response rate was about 33% in the patients who got the percutaneous hepatic perfusion, only about uh, just over 10% in best alternative care. Uh, so we do encourage uh, referral to uh, centers that may be able to provide uh, you know, liver-directed therapies and, and ideally clinical trials um, you know, to try to sort out the optimal treatments for this uh, very difficult to treat cancer.